We recognize that what you would consider the usual health conditions in a community are going to continue through this. And so we need to make sure we have facilities available for those individuals and as much as we can, as David said, do our best to protect our staff because if we don't have staff, we, don't, we can't care for patients. So part of our protocol is going to be and is trying to figure out who really needs to be seen and who can continue to monitor themselves at home. And so that's why we will, are asking people to call before you come. And we will, as Dave, like David, we will try to figure out who really needs seen and who doesn't immediately, and, but err on the side of caution for that. We're not trying to turn people away. We are, and, or we have set up a tent uh, which is outside of the Central Washington Hospital emergency room, and we are going to be asking everyone who has respiratory infection symptoms to go there rather than into the emergency room to begin with. And we will screen people there and try to triage who needs to be seen and who we can give self-care instructions to. Really just trying to keep the virus down to a lower level in the hospital. If people need to be seen, we have some negative pressure rooms in the emergency room so that they can be seen there and not get the virus into the rest of the building. And then if people need to be admitted, we, are ident we have identified specific rooms that we will put people in to try to keep the rest of the facility um, at a lower risk. Can you talk about the case that you're looking at now that is under testing for COVID-19 and when it came to your attention? So the individual has been in the hospital for three or four days and initially did not meet the testing requirements because of their history. When the testing requirements changed, they then qualified for testing and the tests were submitted yesterday. And in the meantime, well, how do you approach that patient's case? So that individual is in isolation and the staff is wearing personal protective equipment when they provide care for that individual. In other cases, uh, in cases that so far have been detected in Washington, the epicenter has been uh, uh, assisted care or uh, care facilities. And the people who have been now submitted for testing or asked to go into quarantine, many of them have been first responders or healthcare workers. Um, does that give the two of you concern for your nurses, your physicians, your staff, uh, and trying to keep them safe? Yes. But we are now, <clears throat> there is a heightened awareness and we will be using personal protective equipment for patient individuals who are in the departments like the emergency room or the intensive care unit who are at a higher risk of exposure to this infectious organism. We do the same thing. We have some uh, very stringent uh, rules about who's going to be taking care of these kind of patients. Those uh, personnel are going to have a heightened level of protection in terms of the equipment they're using. Um, for somebody who doesn't really have a lot of direct patient care, <laughs> me, I'm not going to be wearing anything uh, special. But the nursing staff, the clinical staff, the providers, we will uh, be giving them extra protection. 